Welcome to the Potty Mouth Preacher, transforming women's minds, bodies, and souls, one F-bomb at a time. I am Lisa Cizak, your host. On today's episode, we are going to find out how to not say the F word this holiday season. That's right. You heard me right. The potty mouth preacher does not want you to say the F word this holiday season. And I'm going to tell you how on this episode. Don't forget to subscribe, like, rate, review, all the things for me. I appreciate that. I have a special offer this holiday season. If you don't want to go through another holiday season gaining weight, if you don't want to wait until the new year to actually lose all that weight forever, I am inviting you to a free coaching session with me, a free finally lose the weight forever coaching session with me. While everybody else is chunking out this holiday season, you can get skinny, become a skinny bitch this holiday season. How about that? Go to comments and... Press the link that you see below to book a session with me, a finally lose the weight forever coaching session. Don't wait until the new year. I can't stand that. I cannot stand when I hear I'm going to wait till the new year. I'm going to live it up this holiday season. Then you have that much more work to do. Be the one person that actually loses weight this holiday season. I dare you. Oh. <gasps> Click the link below. Okay, now, as always, I'm going to help you shift gears. So I want you, if you're able to, to close your eyes, take a nice deep breath in, Exhale out. Pretend like your device that you're listening on has a trap door on the back of it. And you are opening up that trap door. And with each big inhale and exhale, you are exhaling out all of your roles in life. Mom, sister, daughter, employee, employer, student, wife. CEO, business owner, all of those roles that might be weighing heavy on you right now. Take another deep breath in and as you exhale, I know you got things weighing heavy on your heart, weighing heavy inside of you. And exhale out every doubt, fear, anxiety, shame, anger, any thoughts that aren't serving you anything that isn't serving you in your life. Exhale it out right here, right now. You're not gonna need any of this during our time together. This is a time that you're setting aside just for you. For once, you get to focus on just being you for the next 20 minutes or so. Now take another three deep cleansing breaths in. Just allowing yourself to just sink deeper into the chair that you're sitting in. Maybe you're in your car. I hope you're not closing your eyes if you're in your car. <laughs> and another. And one more deep cleansing breath. Do it with me. And just feel your whole body relaxing. So now, as always, I want you to say out loud or even better, let's get some interaction going in wherever, whatever platform you're listening on. I hope you're on YouTube because I got my set all done up. I got my fall shirt on. I'm all ready for fall because I'm, I'm an autumn baby. My birthday is October 7th. Anyway, I want you to post in comments 
some celebration since you saw me last, since you heard me last. As if, if this is your first time listening, welcome. Every week we do celebrations. We celebrate every step along the way that is leading us to being the woman God created us to be. No celebration is too small. So go ahead and post that right now. If you're not able to post it because you're driving, just say it out loud to yourself or say it in your head. Acknowledge so that on those days that you're feeling like nothing's working right, what's wrong with me? Like my life isn't right and I did this wrong and I did that wrong. You know those days, right? We have those days. So on those days you can say, no, wait a minute. I wrote down some things I actually did do right. Like, so your brain, you start noticing things that are going your way, things that you are doing, all these little steps that you're doing along the way that are creating this life that you want creating you to be the woman God created you to be. Remember, God did not create us to be miserable. He created us to wake up and say, yes, I get to live another day. I get to share my gifts with the world today. I get to see my children and kiss my children and kiss my husband another day. I get to look in the mirror and say, I like that woman. That's what God created us. That's what you're celebrating. I want to share a celebration. Do you hear my dogs in the back? They're like fighting with each other. I should put the camera down so that you can see that. Anyway, I'm going to read this celebration from one of my subscribers who this woman, even though this is a podcast, right? I talk a lot about weight loss. That's how I ring the bell, right? That's how I get you to come. But There's so many other things in life that weigh us down much more than the extra fat we have on our bodies. And some women, as I'm learning, as I'm doing this podcast, they don't have extra fat on their bodies. They don't have extra weight on their bodies, but they have weight in their life that they need to shed. So this is one of my subscribers. I'm going to read this to you, okay? One of my subscribers wrote this to me before she watched episode two, okay? Episode two is Claiming Your I Am. If you haven't watched it, go back and watch it. So Claiming Her I Am, this is what she wrote, quote, I just now watched your first Potty Mouth episode and thought it was good. You are so full of expression. Why, thank you. You tell it like it is. I don't have trouble with weight issues. I've been the same weight since high school. I may have shrunk a half inch, but hey, that happens when you age. What troubles me is that I'm just an electronic file. Life is so impersonal since COVID. And at age 73, I don't look it or feel it. How can I show the world I still want to work and I'm still capable of working? I like to work. It gives me purpose. I get a chance to share with God, coworkers, managers, etc. Anyone else out there, shake your head, post in comments if you're watching and you're at a certain age and you feel like people are just writing you off, right? Maybe you can't get the job. You think you can't get the job that you want. You can't get into the best shape of your life that you want because of your age. You can't do this, 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 this because of your age, right? So that's what she wrote in before she watched episode two. So after she watched episode two, this is what she wrote to me. I love your podcast. I believe I can get a job and that I am a wonderful employee. Anybody would want me in their employee. Do you see how she applied episode two to her life? Do you see the turnaround that happened? And it happened like that, right? It didn't take weeks and weeks of psychotherapy. It didn't take weeks and weeks of talk therapy, cognitive therapy, none of that, right? It took, boom, like that, of her claiming her I am. And do you see how in the message, how after, before, in the first message she sent me, didn't you get this like, heavy like okay she might not have weight on her body but damn like she's the weight is like weighing her down like I felt I felt that energy right of her like having a ankles ankle bracelet those are for prisoners (laughs) not for 73 year old women looking for jobs but the weight of the world was on her 
And after, did you hear that energy, how she felt just lighter? She felt confident and her I am now gives her direction in her life. It gives her purpose in her life. Now when she wakes up, she says, yeah, let's go. I am ready to be an asset to any employer. I love that. I had to share that with you guys. Go back to episode two if you have not claimed your I am. And even if you already have, you need to remind yourself, We need you can have more than one I am also, okay? You might have an I am related to your body, to your business, you know? Usually I am's though are, have, are related to feelings, right? They're usually not material things. It's usually not, I am, you know, a millionaire. Usually it's not. Usually it's, I am at peace. I am in control. I am transforming. I am love. I am, you see how it's usually like a feeling. Everything we do in life is really a feeling. That's what you're after. You're not really after, like you become a millionaire, so then what? There's a reason why you want to become a millionaire, right? Maybe it brings you financial peace. So it's really financial peace you're after, not being a millionaire. You see the difference? Do not wait until January 1st to feel sexy. Feel sexy now. Feel sexy through the whole holiday season. I am going to help you by offering you a free one-on-one feel sexy this holiday season coaching session with me. In this powerful one-on-one session, you will become crystal clear on feeling sexy. What is it going to feel like to feel sexy this holiday season and beyond? You're going to uncover all the ways you're sabotaging your sexiness. Lastly, you're going to leave this session feeling renewed and inspired to get your sexy on. (laughs) I have limited spots available. Book now so that you actually get a spot Click the link below. You are worth it. So even if you do think that you feel fine this holiday season, I'm going to give you a much better way to respond to Aunt Sally and all the temptations and all the cracks surrounding you this holiday season. And the very first thing is be honest with yourself first. Don't just say you're fine. Really notice how are you feeling? Remember from episode six, we learned that our mind sits on a throne of lies, but our body will never lie to us. So when you walk into that room and there's all your favorite foods, you walk into the belly of the beast at Aunt Sally's house, how are you really feeling? And it's not fine. Fine is not an emotion, okay? So you're going to know how you feel by tuning into your body. Go back to episode six and learn how to send whatever it is you're feeling love. Maybe your jaw is clenched. Maybe your stomach is in knots. Maybe you have a lump in your throat. You feel like you're going to cry because you don't know that you have the willpower to actually sit through the next however many hours with your family and all this crack surrounding you that you might give in. So be honest with yourself. Go in the bathroom if you have to. Just find a quiet place. Even if you're just sitting there, right? Even if someone's talking to you, you can do this. Tap into your body. And if you're feeling a lump in your throat, send that lump just so much love. It represents a part of you that needs love, that needs attention so that you don't end up numbing out with food. That is why you were stuck in this cycle of gaining weight and losing yourself. Or you feel like when the wind blows the wrong way, you just turn to food because you're not acknowledging how you're really feeling. My only rule that I have with my clients 
my private clients and my coaching group when I did my fit for life class at school with the junior high kids. My only rule is integrity, is honesty with yourself and God, because in the end, it is between you and God. That's it. Not you and Aunt Sally who's pushing the crack on you, you and God. So be honest with how you're feeling. Whew. Okay, I like this one. Number two, how to not say the F word during the holiday season. I'm fine. Is, listen to me. Listen, come, come closer. You do not have to choke down Aunt Sally's mini wieners covered in jelly. You do not have to choke down Aunt Sally or your great aunt's famous fruitcake if you don't want it, okay? You do not need to be a people pleaser, especially when it comes to food and what you put into your body. You get to decide and you get to decide, is it worth it? And not, is it worth it in the moment? Sure, in the moment, right? A pizza and beer or a bottle of wine, it might be worth it in the moment because it's immediate gratification. Immediate gratification feels amazing, right? It's like, ooh, like a be genie in a bottle. I want this, I'm, I'm having it, I'm fucking having this. And then you have to ask yourself, is it worth it the next day? It's just like if you go to a bar and you see a really cute guy and you take him home with you and then you wake up the next morning and he's not looking as good as you thought he did in the bar the night before, right? He turns out to be a hairy, monstrous beast that's laying in your bed. He was not worth it. It's the same thing. Do you want to wake up the next morning with a hairy, monstrous beast in your bed? Those, those wieners covered in jelly that Aunt Sally's pushing on you. That's a real thing, by the way. One of my clients, she went to visit her in-laws and they were serving some kind of mini wieners wrapped in jelly and shit and bacon. Is it worth it the next day? Is it gonna be worth it when you go into your training session the next day? Training, remember, you're not working out anymore. You're not exercising anymore. You are training for life. So is it worth it when you get into that training session and you have indigestion and you don't have the stamina and the endurance that you would have normally had if you hadn't downed a whole bottle of vodka, or whatever it is, bottle of wine, 14 margaritas, right? And how do I know this about the indigestion? I'm gonna tell you something. I am on to you. I am on to you. When I was a director of a six week, 20 pound challenge, I could not figure out why there would be times where people would come in there in the middle of the training session saying, I have indigestion, I have indigestion. I thought maybe it was the food we were, the food list that we gave them. Maybe it was the exercises we're doing. Could not figure it out, right? And I even asked them, well, did you stay on the plan? Oh, yes, Lisa, I stayed on the plan. Yes, 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 yes. With their fingers crossed behind their back probably. And so I decided to go on that eating plan, the same exact eating plan they were doing, right? And then after being on it for about a week or two, I went off the rails and I ate whatever I wanted for a day. Well, I'll be damned if the next day when I tried to go into my training session, I had indigestion and I never get indigestion. I do not get indigestion. Even when I was pregnant, I didn't have indigestion. So I'm on to you, right? Yeah, I know all about you people out there. Oh no, no, I ate a quart. I, I didn't have anything. I didn't have anything that could have caused indigestion. So is it worth it the next day? Is it worth it if you step on the scale and you're up? You know, this happens to clients of mine, right? They're up and they're like, I don't know what happened. I don't know what's going on, Lisa. Well, I know what's going on. You aren't having integrity with yourself. You are not being honest with yourself. You are not being honest with yourself and God. Be honest and ask yourself if what I'm about to put in my mouth is worth it. And if it is worth it, have at it. But worth it the next day. Worth gaining weight. Worth being depressed. Worth beating yourself up over it. That's what you got to ask yourself. 
The third thing, the third way you're not gonna say the F word this holiday season is you're not gonna overuse willpower. Willpower is a muscle that can be overused. I see this all the time, right? Husbands are like, you should just have enough willpower to stay on your diet. You should just have enough willpower. I should be able to bring in your favorite candy and treats. This happens to you, this is a real life example of many clients of mine, one in particular, and her husband kept bringing in her favorite candies, right? I don't remember if they were red vines, I don't remember what they were. And he's like, well, I don't understand. I mean, I can do it, why can't you do it? Are you fucking kidding me? Willpower is a muscle, no different than any other muscle. If I had you do, buy, if I had that husband do bicep curls all day long. Just keep going. It's willpower. Come on. You can do it. You know you can do it. His biceps would blow up. They will overuse the muscle. Same thing with willpower. So be very careful about who you surround yourself with and don't be afraid to ask, hey, I'm having a hard time this holiday season. Can you please not have, you know, my favorite cinnamon rolls or my favorite this or my favorite that? And if these people cannot, you know, forego cinnamon rolls or whatever their, you know, big, whatever their crack is for one meal, who has the real problem here? It's not you, honey. It's not you that has the problem. I am getting so worked up. My dogs are in here. My dogs are fighting with each other. They're getting so worked up over what I'm saying. So if you hear ruckus in the background, we're just gonna go with it, okay? All right, so the, la the fourth way you're not gonna say the F word this holiday season is you are going to be an observer, not a participant in overindulging, okay? You got, you got your why, right? If you don't have it, go back to episode one. You've got your I am, your powerful I am statement that you're already being, and you can sit there and I want you to really observe how people, like, you know, holiday gatherings center around food. People are obsessed. People are food addicted in this country, sugar addicted, alcohol addicted. And you will sit back as an observer and watch. Whoa, look at what's happening, right? And you can watch them getting fatter and fatter and fatter as you are shrinking and shrinking and shrinking this holiday season so that on New Year's Day, you wake up and you are already losing the weight. You are already a smaller size during the holiday season. And it is possible. I did an experiment with myself because this company wanted to hire me because they put people on this special diet and they wanted me to come in and counsel these people emotionally. And I said, uh-uh, I've never been on this diet. I need to know. It's like a 500 calorie diet. Oh no, you'll feel great. You'll feel amazing, right? And I decided to do it during the holiday season on purpose to see, is this doable? Or how am I gonna feel on this? And although I gained, or I lost 22 pounds during the holiday season. And yeah, I had it to lose, right? It's not like I was a skinny bitch that didn't have it to lose. I did have it to lose. So my point is it is possible to, if I can do a 500 calorie diet and be, I was in New York City at the time too, scotch tasting parties. I was the PA of my daughter's Manhattan fancy uh, school and we were having scotch tasting parties and cheese tasting parties and I'm showing up with my celery and carrot sticks on my 500 calories. It is possible, I would not suggest you do a 500 calorie diet. I did not go and work for those people because of this reason. I don't do everything I tell you to do. I know it works because I've done it. I have done it. I'm not telling you to do anything I haven't done myself. Whew. Okay. The fifth way you're not going to say the F word this holiday season. Ah, oh, I love this. You're going to set your intention every day. When you first wake up in the morning, you're in that sleepy state, you know, before like you even know what's happening. And I want you to set your intention for the day, knowing what you have ahead of you, knowing you might have some really hard things that you, you're dealing with, knowing that you might be going to holiday parties, there might be a lot of temptations, maybe it's Halloween and the Snickers are 
are coming out. Well, I don't know, whatever. So you're gonna set your intention for how you wanna feel that day. So today I'm, in, today I'm going to feel in control peacefully in control. Let's use that one, right? So this way, when you show up to work and they've got all the apple cider donuts, right? Those come out this time of year. Yeah, that's some crack right there. And somebody says to you, oh my gosh, I forgot your Lisa's making you eat that way. This must be so hard for you. Instead of saying, no, I'm fine using the F word, instead, you're going to say, this is what you're gonna say, nobody, not Lisa, nobody can make me do anything. I am choosing not to eat those apple cider donuts. I am choosing to stay peacefully in control. So you might be tempted, you might say, I am tempted, right? This is really tempting me. And you see, it's not but, it's and I am choosing to stay peacefully in control. You want to acknowledge how you really feel. We don't ever want to brush our feelings under the rug. Don't do that. Look, come closer. Do not brush your feelings under the rug. You will end up numbing out with food. You will end up eating all the apple cider donuts when no one's looking and numbing out with food, numbing out with the apple cider donuts. So you're setting your intention, right? And this is so powerful. When clients are done with me, when we're done with our time together, usually it's six months, usually it's six months to a year, depending on what their goals are. Sometimes I have some clients that I've been with for five, six years though. So but when we're done and I ask them, like, what's the most valuable part of our session today? They tell me it's the setting of the intention because like they know little things no longer irritate them. Like my one client, Marsha is her name. She said she used to have road rage. She would get so annoyed on the road, right? And since doing this, she'll say to herself, I am really aggravated with the assholes speeding. These are her words, not the potty mouth preachers. I'm really aggravated with these assholes cutting me off and driving dangerously. But instead of, you know, cursing and swearing, I am going to choose to say peacefully in control. And it works. She said her, I anxiety, it's like an anxiety pill right? I'm giving you an anxiety pill. You don't need no damn anxiety pills. I am your anxiety pill. This is your anxiety pill. So how I want to end this session is so powerful. It's only going to take a couple minutes. I want you to do this when you can find a nice quiet space and have some privacy. So I'm going to give you a minute to do that, to get settled into your chair, or you can lay down for this. And we're going to play some nice music. Okay. Here we go. Take three deep cleansing breaths. One more deep cleansing breath. And just notice the temperature of the room on your skin. Notice any noises you might hear either inside or out. Or on my end, you might hear my dogs barking or fighting with each other. Just go with it. Notice any smells in the room. Notice any, any sensations you're feeling in your body. Notice how your body feels on the chair. Notice how your body feels on the surface that you might be lying on. And just noticing your breath, not judging it, just noticing it. And I want you to do a quick body scan. And you're just noticing any areas of tension or any areas of, you know, tightness. And you're just sending those areas love. And I want you to name three things that you're grateful for. Making sure at least one of those things has not happened yet, but you are praying, believing, and you know and trust that if it's in your best interest, God and the universe will conspire to make it happen. 
And now I want you to set your intention for how you want to feel today, knowing everything that you need to do the rest of the day, what might be ahead of you, and set your intention for how you want to feel. And take a deep breath in and allow that intention to just flow through your entire body, seeping into every cell so that you carry that intention with you. Maybe your intention is to be productive. Maybe your intention is to be peaceful. Maybe your intention is to be focused. Whatever it is, allow it to seep through every cell in your body. And now I want you to say with the energy behind it in your mind, your powerful I am statement at least three times, really feeling the energy behind that I am. What is it going to feel like to be that I am? What are you going to be doing? Who are you going to be with? What are you going to be wearing? What are you going to be saying to yourself being this I am? And just allow yourself to stay in this space of this I am, knowing and trusting. And then take a nice deep breath in, and I want you to allow the love and the gratitude and your intention for the day and your I am to just seep in every cell of your body so that you carry it with you the remainder of the day. And now take a nice deep breath in. <sighs> Exhale out anything that isn't serving you. Exhale out any sensations, thoughts, feelings that you know aren't serving you. And take another deep inhale, exhale out. And now I want you to notice the temperature of the room, again, on your skin. Notice any noises you hear inside or out. Notice any smells in the room. Notice how your body feels coming back. Notice how the, your body feels supported by the surface you're on. And then I want you to slowly open up your eyes, getting used to the light in the room again. And I want you to claim your I am. You don't have to scream it, you can say it silently. I don't care how you do it, just make sure you have the energy behind it of you believing, of you being this I am, of you walking around the world in this I am strong in the intention that you set for today. Okay, now we are headed on to soul work. The last thing that we do, the most important soul work you're going to have going into this holiday season to prepare, you're preparing for battle. That's just what you're doing, okay? You're preparing for battle. You need to go back to episode one and two and revisit, reignite your why, your I am. You can have different I am's. You can have an I am for your body, like I talked about before. Maybe you have multiple I am's, but you have one driving force, one holiday. Let's come up with a holiday I am right? That's going to carry you from this point, all of November to the new year. This is your new holiday I am. Okay. It's your new North star. That's going to guide. Remember every thought, action, decision, behavior, and person in your life. This is your guidebook to not saying the F word during the holidays. <laughs> and then your second soul work is going to be to set your intention every single day. Acknowledge how you're really feeling instead of saying the F word, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. My daughter hates it when I do that. She's like, she'll be like, mom, are you okay? Are you and dad fighting? No, I'm fine. Dad and I aren't fighting. I am fine. She hates that. So no more F word. Acknowledge how you're feeling and I choose this instead. That's the key. Because remember, we are rewiring that beautiful brain of yours to seek out how you really want to feel. 
And lastly, you are not fine. God did not create you to be fine. You are God's masterpiece. He created you to wake up every day feeling a wide range of emotions. Not fine. If God didn't want us to experience all of these emotions, he never would have given them to us to experience. He wants you to acknowledge and experience your emotions because you are an emotional creature, not allow your emotions to decide your course of action, right? Make decisions starting from this point on based on who you are, not how you feel. Your decisions are going to be based on your I am, who you are, while you're still acknowledging your feelings and choosing your, how, your intended feeling. So to end, you are not the F word. You are much more than the F word. You are not fine. You are worth it. Woo!